therefore, we all remember that they flew people who were even on the surgeon's table with their brains split open and being read like a newspaper by the surgeons in America. Kennedy edge upon on my mind. He risked his life because he was told that it was in the service of God and country. And that if he did not come, it meant that the party would have been betrayed. My brother, they hurriedly closed his brains and shipped him on a chartered flight, which he said he refused. He had to come by a normal flight. My brother, my sister, to Ghana. Ajwa Safu was out there minding a business, having abandoned the Ministry of Women, Gender, Children, and Social Welfare. She was also shipped and chauffeured in a chartered flight. My brother, my sister, as to who bore the cost, your guess is as good as mine. And when she was brought here, they still had to bribe her by inundating her Fidelity Bank account with cash, pure cash, as told to us by her baby father, Kennedy Japan. My brother, my sister, that did not end it. They went all the way to Canada and shipped in another MP, all because of the demonic E-Levy. Remember when I first nicknamed it the demonic E-Levy? My brother, my sister, today has it come to pass or not? And that is not even the end. There was another MP, in fact, a minister, who was so ill and wanted to resign. But he was being cajoled to hang on to life and at least vote for the E-Levy before dying. Do we all remember the minister of Chief Tansy? They shipped him all the way in an ambulance, brought him all the way to the parliament house, hanging on a thin thread of life, briefing palpably. My brother, my sister, he was looking at all these people in parliament at the disregard for life. But he didn't want to disappoint his party. In the ambulance, he waited and waited for several hours for the voting to begin because he was on life support. Can you believe this? On life support. They brought him in an ambulance. And the ambulance was a waiting ambulance. Whilst tens of thousands of other people around Ghana, my brother, my sister, were looking for a service from the ambulance for even five minutes to hang on to life. Somebody chatted the ambulance, parked it in front of the parliament house, hanging on the thin thread of life, waiting to vote for the demonic E-Levy. All these jingoisms and gymnastics they did in order to pass the E-Levy. My brother, my sister, today Baumia has poo-pooed on all the efforts. He has poo-pooed on all the nonsense and the jingoisms that went on. How do you feel? Sam George is asking. And I asked this question earlier. Baumia has made a fool out of all these people. Baumia has made them come to see that it was an exercise in sheer futility. My brother, my sister, Kennedy Japan, in fact, if he goes to throw anti-ballistic missiles at the missiles this, that these people are throwing at him, in the so-called showdown, I understand him. If today Kennedy Japan becomes a suicide bomber against his party and goes to throw vitriolic bombs at his party in a showdown, I would understand him. His life was risked for a certain E-Levy. As he told us, he was told by the economics people, the finance people, Bawamia and Kennedy, uh, Kenoforiata, that if the E-Levy was not passed, we would go a begging at the doors of the World Bank and the IMF. Kennedy didn't like it. He came out and told the whole Ghana that we will never go to the IMF. Why did he say that? 
was on the surgeon's table with his brains opened and longitudinally and horizontally being checked, left, right, and center, to make sure all the wires were reconnected. He had to abandon his surgeon because he was told, Ken, if you do not come to vote for the E levy, we are going to the IMF and the World Bank to beg. He said, Are you sure? They said, Yes, please come. He asked the surgeon to close his head quickly and hurriedly he rushed into the country. We all saw Kennedy enter here after we heard rumors that he was dead and that he was not going to return. My brother, my sister, he was here, all hale and hearty. He voted for the E Levy amidst all the jingoisms and gymnastics. Today, Baumia says it was an exercise in futility, pure political jingoisms. He has poo pooed on this. It's a disgrace to Nana Kufuado. It's a disgrace to Kenu Furiata. It's a disgrace to Gabi Asari And all those people who were pushing for this demonic E levy. Having fought the NDC in Parliament, we all remember how these people came together to chew ballot boxes and ballot papers like goats on heat and punch each other's pot bellies, all because of the vote to see who became the next Speaker of Parliament. We all remember how army people came into the Parliament House with guns and bombs and missiles of destruction to stop MPs from a kindergarten childish infantile behavior in Parliament, the so-called honorables. Today, my brother, my sister, Sam George is asking a very harmless question. Baumia says he would take out the E levy. Please, what would you now say, having risked your lives to come and run a party agenda instead of running a national agenda? I leave it here. <laughs>